speak student. Beowulf al Ashmuk, a king's responsibilities. All right, well, as is the case for most epics, uh, the main characters are often the most important people in a society, usually the rulers of one kind or another. And in Beowulf, we start by getting a lineage of rulers from Shield to Hrothgar. Um, what do these rulers need to do to keep their people happy and, more importantly, loyal? Because presumably, if they're not loyal, the king becomes dinner. Exactly. The king and his in and entire his, his group. family and All his groupies. Else, uh, exactly. Yeah, see the Russian Revolution for details. So, so the first thing that the king has to do is protect his people. Um, there was tons of warring tribes going on at the time. So basically the, the king had to protect his um, territory from, you know, invaders, but also, as we see in Beowulf, from monsters. This leads into the second thing that a, that a king or a ruler has to do, and that's give gifts. So if... Uh, you're, the people who are protecting you, and King Hrothgar has these thanes who kind of help protect him. Um, if they help protect the territory, which is thing number one that the king has to do, then the king has to reward them somehow. And he does this by giving them gifts. Um, everything from shields, armor, jewelry, and it's all about material things, which we'll, we'll talk about. So the blessing with the sword over the shoulder is not... Uh, cherished. Uh, no, era. not exactly. Not as much. Um, that's the Arthur style. Yeah, um, yeah. way higher margin to <laughs> just go like this than have to it, give something. Exactly. Yeah. It's really all about the, the material, about the bling. And then the third thing that a king has to do is provide kind of a social hub, like a, a gathering place. And Hrothgar does this um, with uh, Herod, which is his mead hall. And this is a place where everyone gets together to celebrate um, and to give gifts and to eat. This is really a place where all of what a king needs to do comes together because um, soldiers sleep there, so it's protecting. Uh, there's gift giving that goes on. This is where the celebrations happen. And then everything else that's important to the society, um, boasting, which we'll talk about later, uh, the eating a lot, celebrating, um, just showing off all of the, the material wealth. This all happens in, in the Mead Hall. In Beowulf in particular, um, Herod becomes a symbol uh, for, for Hrothgar and for the story in general because it continues to be attacked. This is what's at the crux of the story, is that the story opens and they're all celebrating in the Mead Hall and then Grendel just keeps coming and attacking and every night it just gets completely destroyed. Um, and Herod actually means heart, like a deer, which is kind of an animal that's preyed on a lot. So it, it is a symbol um, of how this wealth and this material showiness is so important to Hrothgar, but um, it just keeps getting attacked and, and that's a really big blow to the ruler. So he's got to do something about it and so enter Beowulf. Wow, interesting. Um, symbology, like the deer's heart and so on, because you have something that's vulnerable, but also incredibly useful, and if they didn't have deer, they'd probably starve, I'd imagine, or at least not have a lot of protein in their diet. Um, symbology was important in that, were, like, were these people, was it, because it feels like a sophisticated society on a lot of levels where they, they would get around uh, uh, giving bad news by giving a symbol of a dying raven who came in with a, I don't know, a bramble bush instead of an olive tree thing or whatever. Um, how did that work in, in that, their parlance of that Yeah, the, 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 the materiality of, of the society is a great way to prove that this symbology is important, right? The, the king gives jewelry or gives a shield, gives something really kind of glitzy and glammy, and that's to symbolize the success and the power of, of someone who has done something good. So really, all these material things symbolize power and symbolize wealth, which is a huge issue. And the language itself actually kind of does that. Uh, Old English has this thing called a kenning, which is basically like a, a compound noun. And what it does is it you would be called, for example, instead of a wanderer, you would be called an earth stepper or something like that. Huh. So it, again, it's kind of symbolic in, yeah. in language as well as in material things. So in material things though, just on the bling, because I know we'll be interested in that, um, what was bling in those days? Yeah. Like what was jewelry? Like I, I'm thinking of, you know, a horde of prisoners, you know, grinding, uh, I don't know, would be emeralds and gems and stones and clay pots and things. Is, is that what jewelry was? Yeah, or? not clay pots, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a later lesson, but um, 
everything from, yeah, big jewel, I mean, just like you can, exactly what you'd imagine by jewelry, but you know, this isn't like dainty stuff. Um, you know, this isn't like a little pearl on a nice uh, right, necklace. Right. This is like big bling. And then it's also, um, you know, armor that covers your entire body or um, a, a helmet or a shield or a sword. Um, so it's really kind of a combination thing. And, and in Beowulf, we see the women wearing a like a totally blinged out in jewelry and the men are like always decked out in armor. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hugely important. What does a ruler need to do to keep his subjects happy and loyal? What kind of social customs are important to the people in Beowulf? Herat symbolizes what in Beowulf, and how are symbols important to the culture of Beowulf? Presumably, if they're not loyal, the king becomes dinner. 